Yeah, it was 1932, decades before there was a Blumenthal stage here in Charlotte. Back then, the musicians were all volunteers, and the symphony budget was $60 a year. Today, well, it'll cost you 60 bucks for a symphony ticket. But uh, that's how far we've come here in Charlotte, both the city and its orchestra, our orchestra. But this evening is not simply a celebration. We are not an island. We are part of this city, part of this world. And I'm so grateful to have you all with us as we celebrate 90 years of incredible music in Charlotte. Happy birthday to us. Orchestra president David Fisk welcomes this sellout Charlotte Symphony birthday audience and a special birthday guest who brought a special birthday gift. This is a painting I wanted to give you all of my grandfather. Catherine Roxlow's grandfather is Guillermo de Roxlow, the Charlotte Symphony's founder and first conductor, whose orchestra made music headlines then and is still making music history today. 90 years ago, my grandfather, Guillermo de Roxlow, conducted the first symphony orchestra here in Charlotte. And um, he came from Barcelona and it took him seven years to get here. But once he got to Charlotte, everything changed. And Charlotte means so much to my family. Charlotte gave Guillermo a beautiful city to call home, a wonderful, um, rewarding career. He was a symphony conductor and wrote much of the music and wrote by hand all the pieces for the uh, individual players because they had no money for, to buy music. Do you guys get paid? <laughs> they didn't get paid back then. It's interesting. Um, I saw some of the newspaper clippings. Literally, he put an ad in the paper, right? That's how he found his, uh, yeah. his first group of musicians. Yeah, and, and it was community. It was school teachers and, you know, bankers and lawyers and just whoever had an instrument. We're talking with Catherine Roxlow from her home in Phoenix, where that same family um, portrait of her grandfather hangs with pride the in the background. The pride that he had and that this was a community symphony. It wasn't professionals. And he said, I found my place. I now, I know, this is where I'm supposed to be. And they said um, Charlotte reminded them of home. They loved the pine trees of North Carolina and South Carolina. It just felt so good to them. Today, de Roxlow's Charlotte Symphony legacy brings feel-good moments to all of us. as the symphony performs not just in Charlotte, but in all of Charlotte's surrounding towns and cities. Back in the 50s, they started the symphony school concerts that they still play today. In the 60s came Charlotte's first African-American symphony musicians. The 70s and 80s brought Charlotte's popular Pops in the Park series. You'll have plenty of time to get on the train once it comes. And in 1987, the Charlotte Symphony traveled to Germany and Poland for their long-awaited and much-anticipated European tour. And there was decided that the cultural borders would be reopened again. And the great idea about this was that to bring the Polish orchestra and the Charlotte Symphony together to perform together the great Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. <laughs> The past two years of pandemic forced the Charlotte Symphony to scale down, with fewer musicians playing smaller, socially distanced concerts, often outdoors or online. And it's funny because when you've been deprived of something and you then get it back, it sounds even bigger than before. <laughs> bigger and richer. And the uh, opportunity for us is to keep welcoming those new audiences. are good musicians. You have so much to be proud of. And I mean, I was proud to just hear it. 
What would Guillermo think today if he could look down or look back and see this uh, orchestra 90 years later? I guess he'd be equally proud of, of what they've become and, and who they are today. Very proud and um, I feel that he can kind of take a breath and rest at this point. Knowing what Charlotte has done with what he started. Yeah, and they'll be celebrating the symphony's birthday all symphony season long. 90 years of uh, bringing music to our ears. We hope you enjoyed the story. If you don't want to miss any more great stories about the Charlotte region, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.